Hello everyone, welcome back to Ray Zero Space and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I'm faced with the reality that the medium wing may not be sufficient for our dropship needs because it is not strong enough, at least it seems to keep ripping off whenever we do a mission with the dropship. And so we need to use the large wing, but if we're going to use the heavy wing, which is five times heavier than the medium wing, uh, we should just make a large dropship, right? I mean, uh, we'd be carrying a lot of extra mass a long way. And so we should just make things bigger and more capable so that I can carry more payload as well instead of just carrying wings all the time. So I have made a larger dropship. This is the heavy dropship. At the same time, we get to use the larger nuclear engines, which are more efficient anyway. Uh, I say engines because it seems like a cluster of a bunch of them. But uh, this one, uh, the Swerve, it's 10 tons compared to 3 tons for the Nerve. Uh, but it produces 700 kilonewtons of thrust compared to 75, so it's got nearly 10 times the thrust, but only about 3.3 times the mass. So that's really good. Plus, its ISP in vacuum is 1,450, compared to just 900 for the nerve. So it's great, but it's heavy. So we need to make a heavy ship to carry it, and that's what we've got here. Uh, you'll note the jet engines mounted on the front here. This is an unusual design, obviously. Um, and maybe I should sling them a little bit lower just so that they're not blasting the wing, but it it has precedence. Uh, the Junkers JU-287 had jet engines up front, but the reason for this is to counterbalance the nuke in the back, right? In the previous design, we had a very heavy cockpit up front, and so we put the jet in the back because that counterbalanced the cockpit and the nerve was relatively light. In this case, the nuclear engine is very heavy, and the cockpit is very light, and we don't really have a bigger cockpit to use. Uh, well, this one is actually lighter than the than the shuttle cockpit, but we didn't have a very good adapter between the shuttle cockpit and the XL size, and I didn't want to use two adapters, so I just went with this one, which doesn't have as much heat tolerance, this cockatoo. Uh, it only has 850 Kelvin versus the shuttle cockpit's 1,500, but we don't have any thermal issues right now anyway. So I decided to go with this one just for the form factor and we'll adjust it if they introduce thermal issues. So yeah, we've carefully balanced the front end with the nuke in the back. That's why in fact we have those batteries there that even makes it more accurate. And we're using vector engines in order to do the VTOL part because that seemed like the best thing to do. Might need to tweak things a little bit though. Uh, you can see the center of thrust that you see there is, in fact, the location for the vector engines. We've turned off the nuke and we've turned off the jets right now. They don't produce thrust right now. You'll notice right now that I don't have the stabilizers on and that's because of a conundrum I have. Uh, we could put the heavy stabilizers, but you can see they move the center of lift by quite a lot. So that's not great. If we put the medium ones, they still move it by a fair amount, considering you know how small they are compared to the wing. And so we end up with a situation where we might have to put both canards and stabilizers in the back in order to balance it all out. Now this is a probable location for the canards. I mean here it's sort of almost following that line. These are the things that make designs look good. Uh, I don't know if that's got to be enough pitch control at all. It doesn't look like it. Oh wow, look at that. Uh, well, uh, maybe that's because of the... Let's just put them on here instead. I think putting them like that was a problem. By the way, the fuel tanks in front of the jet engines here are empty and that's because they're part of the balance and not part of not a part that I want to have drain at the moment if we want to move the center mass forward we can use them but right now that wasn't really a goal so yeah well this is our balance right now you'll note that because of the heaviness of the wing I'm not using multiple wing pieces we're just using one not necessarily the best situation I don't know whether it is the ideal gap or not. At least the center of thrust seems to be right in this case. All right, well, I'll do some action grouping and telling which surfaces to do what, and then we'll bring it outside and see how it goes. 
Okay, I've time warped to morning, and we actually lost some electric charge in the meantime. It did a little bit of a twitch there. And our rear vector is actually sort of on the surface, which isn't great. But, alright. Uh, well, let's see what happens. It hasn't exploded yet! Okay, well, the balance is okay. But we're, we're sort of... Uh, we need to move one. It clearly this isn't right. Yeah. We need the back one to be further back. Okay. So noted. I prefer the thuds and... Maybe for the Moon or Minmus we would place the thuds instead. But right now, testing it here... We will go with the vectors. I feel like it's tilted a little bit. Let's just tilt it like that. Or increasing the strength. Nah, eh, still wants to sit on that engine. Okay, well anyway. Jets. Uh still not quite right, it looks like. Ow. I'll move the forward one back a bit to give it less leverage. Surprise, though. I thought we were pretty well off as far as the placement's concerned. Why don't I try for a uh... Jet plus VTOL start. Oh, it turned off the jets like that. Oh, I don't need that. Okay, that's better. We'll try and pick up speed and lighten the load. We're actually carrying all the hydrogen right now, too. Which is... Well, we can't even see it right now there. But we are carrying the hydrogen, which is going above and beyond. But that's because the vectors can do it. We don't really have a engine... A suitable engine between the thuds and the vectors that could be used here. Easily. The form factors just aren't very conducive. I, I'll consider them, though. They just won't look quite as streamlined. Okay, I don't know if the two whiplashes are good enough to keep us going at all. But we're going to find out. Uh, I can't pull up very well. Just real it's a heavy, heavy drop ship. <laughs> well, I can pull up, but we're not going fast. I don't think I have enough margin to even make any turns. Let me try and burn off some more of the fuel maybe. Or more the oxidizer, in fact. Let's get rid of some oxidizer, lighten the load, and see if that helps. I really want more of the methane. But yeah, we don't have much pitch authority at all. But we can try it without the hydrogen. The hydrogen is 20 tons of extra load. It looks weird with the jets up front there. And the fact that not pointed straight back I know is not great. But again, balance is everything. And we don't want to carry more jets than we absolutely need because we're going to be carrying them all the way on a space mission. So if these two can do it, we'll just stick to these two. Oh no, it ripped apart. Why? It isn't even giving me a dialogue. 
No, and I can't control that. Not before it crashes into the surface. It didn't even tell me that it was ripping apart. So the heavy ones, uh, the, the benefit is that they do this and they don't tell you that they're going to rip apart, even though that they are. That's the, the plus side of having a heavy one instead of a medium one. Ah, uh, look, the other one's switching over there too. Okay. Well, revert. I don't think I want this thing hanging out. Well, we'll try without the hydrogen just to see how it does. I maintain that my design is okay. It's the game. <laughs> the game doesn't want to play nice, but my, my design's okay. And we don't need that much. We have to burn extra of the oxidizer, so we'll just start off with less oxidizer. A balanced amount of less oxidizer, of course. I already put these little pods here in order to try to get the landing gear, rear landing gear lower. But let me just, since we're dragging that vector engine, I'll tweak these down a bit too. I don't know if keeping it out on a runway for a while hurts its structural integrity or something. I don't know, something else lost control over there. Okay. We'll try those, and then the jets. Oh no, it's tipping backwards. Well, this isn't good. Hmm. So, that, it doesn't seem like our balance is quite right, even though I try my best to check it. As we've emptied the tanks, our tanks should be symmetrical about the center of mass. But as we've emptied the tanks, it's clearly not the case. So I might have to change the shape of the wing a little bit. But yeah, as we drain the fuel, it really shouldn't change the balance of it. That's the important part, and that's the one thing we need to be sure about. Okay, let's try again. Bit of a flex. No, it's still tipping backwards. Well, let me like, look at the center of thrust and see what's going on. It's showing more thrust in the back, isn't it? But we're getting the reverse result, right? I mean, well, let's see orthographic stuff. Okay, see? And on the orthographic view, it's showing that the thrust is further back here. And I've turned off everything except for the two vectors. But if the center of thrust is further back, then it should be flipping this way, not that way. So, it's weird. Um, something's not quite right about that. Let's just double check that our engines, this is thrust limited to zero. This jet is thrust limited to zero. That jet is thrust limited to zero. So it is just the vectors that are producing that thrust. Now, of course, the jets eventually, I start them but they're not going to have a component in this direction unless they really really want to by vectoring but we I mean I don't think that'll be working adversely to this I think we could shift them down so they're not blasting at the wing just in case that I, f I find it difficult to believe that the sim is actually doing something about that but yeah, I mean, that center of thrust is definitely further back, but we're getting too much from the forward one. So I'll shift this back a bit more, but then that throws off what we had last time. Last time we had a good enough balance. Another way to balance it is to just change the max thrust on it by using the thrust limiter. And in a pinch, during a mission, we would do that. So if I decide I was flipping out during a mission for some reason, in an emergency I would use the thrust limiter, but we don't want to design it based on that. But I really wish the center of thrust indicator was 
you know, right. Uh, there is a center of pressure. That is a little bit far back. I guess we could move this forward and try and maybe don't really want to move those forward. We could move these forward just in case the center of pressure is what's causing a problem. Okay, here we go again. Okay, it's pretty much, it's, it is tipping a little bit forward, which is fine. And then it leans back. But there shouldn't be any symmetry in the way it drains. It starts out forward. I didn't even light the jets this time. Really remarkable explosion. Uh, well, some of it is hanging out, but the cockpit definitely died. We'll just try lighting the jets initially as well. Okay, so, jets. I strongly doubt they have the oomph to actually get us off the ground. I think we'll engage the vectors now. Can it control itself now, or is it still gonna flip out? But that means it's using its aerodynamics in order to stop from flipping out, which is not good. But then the center of thrust indicator isn't giving any help because it seems to indicate that it's in the opposite place from where we would flip out backwards. <laughs> so uh, maybe maybe I'm thinking about it wrong, but as far as I can tell, if the center of thrust is behind your center of mass, that would push you tail forwards. We're going to expend all the oxidizer. It's possible that this thing needs more wing, but again, because we're going all the way out to the Moon or Minmus, we want as little wing as possible. Same with the jets, as little jets, as little wing as possible. Okay, that's the end of our oxidizer. It's now just jets. We'll just turn the vectors off. I mean, right now it's a little bit nose heavy, or it feels that way. We can pull up though. Again, last time we had the hydrogen in. Of course, we're not carrying any cargo. I mean, this is supposed to lift cargo to the moon or Minmus. Hopefully, we can put a pretty heavy cargo in the bay and still have it all work out. But, okay, at what point do the wings rip off or we just have a catastrophic failure? I mean, maybe it's the jets blowing at it that caused the failure. We've moved the jets down a bit. But it's not like it told us anything. Like heat damage from jets or anything. We should probably try to move the center of pressure further up since it feels sort of nose heavy. This is not the heaviest dropship I could potentially make, of course. It's just a heavy dropship. The flight envelope for this is not huge. But then again, in normal operations, it'd be coming down from orbital speeds. So it'll have plenty of speed coming in. That's not the problem. The problem is how long can we trust our wings more than anything else? Now, I haven't put any struts, so we could put struts. If that is the thing that we think is necessary, and if they help. I mean, they usually help. Struts are struts. Well, trying to line up here, but this thing is a beast. This thing is a bit of a beast to handle. There are reasons why the vast, vast majority of planes do not put their jets in front. The wings just flew off. The wings just flew off. Okay, wait, we still got the canards. Can, can Bill eviate? E Bill's eviate? Bill's eviate? Oh, I don't know where Bill went, actually. Alright, fine. We need to put struts. Two struts apiece, we'll go with that. Okay, uh, we will try the jets first. 
but we won't gain much speed with them. We'll immediately go with the vectors. But yeah, it does tend to want to pitch up for reasons. But as long as we've got the jets pushing us forward, we can control it. And once again, we'll just dump all the vector fuel. Okay, just turning the vectors off. At these speeds, these intakes aren't particularly good. There are better intakes to use. I just used them because of the looks. I didn't want the normal circular ones, which are better at lower speeds. Because it wouldn't look as streamlined. So a little bit of a reduction of functionality there. Once again, I'd like to mention to any potential developers that might be watching, joystick support would be really good. Joystick support would be really helpful right now. Among other things. Obviously stronger wings would be nice. These are the heavy wings. Okay, well we can throw down a bit. Let's bring the gear down. Looking to keep it at about 120. I think that's the safe speed here. And I don't care if I land into the runway right now. Oh, that's a little bit too slow. Uh, oh, bounce. Okay. Okay. Brakes. And squeaks. All right, we made it back. The struts worked. The struts held. Struts held. But it's a lot more troublesome than the previous one. And I have no idea whether it's going to survive a mission to the moon or Minmus, considering the wings broke off here already. So I don't know if the heavy wings are any improvement at all. We'll think about it. But at least for once we get to recover vessel. So alright, the heavy dropship folks. We'll see if we can put it into action. But... I don't know, it seems to have the same problems as the previous dropship, so I don't know. At least it can carry heavier cargo, and actually has more delta V because of the efficiency of the swerve as opposed to the nerve. But yeah, <laughs> I, I anticipate difficulties here too. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.